Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this demo where we'll be demonstrating PKCS 11, how it is structured and available with Opti. So I have my colleagues with me over here, Etienne, Vesa and Victor, and we'll be taking you through the demo today. Okay, uh, here is a brief overview of the architecture. I'll not be delving into details. We have already covered it in the last Connect session, but mainly we have a library which we refer to as the libckt.so, which is a crypto key library and exposes the crypto key or the PKCS 11 APIs, which the normal world can use, and a PKCS 11 TA, which is sitting on the secure world side. So now uh, we'll be shifting over to our terminals where we'll demonstrate how you can build the solution and uh, run in with some standard PKCS 11 providers. So in the first demo, we'll be showing you some easy steps to try out the PKCS 11 library on the Chemo V8 environment. Here are the uh, steps to initialize the repo, download the tool chain and build stuff. If you want to try out OpenSSL, OpenSSH, and the libp11 uh, packages, which we'll be using in the demo today, you can enable these packages in your build route. To try out the PKCS11 test, these are the steps which you can follow to uh, clone the PKCS11 test repository and build it. And now I would be showing you how to build and launch the chemo environment. I already have it built in with me, so I'm just using a runway command. So two terminals pop up. One is the non -secure, for the non-secure world, another is for the secure world. So as we continue on Chemo, you can see the log, logs coming up. Here you can see Linux booting up and the TE terminal logs. Next, we'll uh, SSH into the Linux console we just logged in. And I'll show you a few demonstration using PKCS11 tool. Here you can see the number of slots available with the PKCS11 tool the mechanisms which the, uh, which the library supports. And we have just initialized the token with the user pin and the SO pin. So next, uh, I'll be showing you an OpenSSH demo. And for that, we just generated a 2048-bit RSA key and then use the SSH key gen command to export the public key, uh, which is stored in the opti in the correct form for OpenSSH. You need to add it in the authorized keys on your SSH server. I have a local SSH server. I just did that and I'm just try to log into my local SSH server. So it asked me for the pin, as you saw. So this is how you can use it along with OpenSSH. In the next part, we'll just be creating, generating few objects. Maybe if you are up here, we've generated a 2048 bit RSA key. Next, we generate an ECC key. Here, we'll just generate an AES key and try to list the objects using the PKCS11 list objects. So this is the output which you get. So these are the four objects which are there in the PKCS and even library as of now. Let's try and play around with OpenSSL. So we've just generated an input file. In order for the PKCS 11 engine to work with OpenSSL, you need to export this path. And then we just signed a file using RSA PSS padding with SHA384 and used OpenSSL to verify whether the created signature was correct or not. You can test run tests locally as we just did. And the command which was used was with the X test. So you can uh, specify the X test PKCS 11 option over here, and you can see the X test running. And next, I'll demo how you can run the PKCS 11 tests. So as you saw, we just uh, mapped the uh, PKCS 11 test, which we had built on our local environment, and then launched the PKCS 11 test, specifying the tc.so library. The, uh, the wrapping mechanism which we wanted wanted to use and the slot on which we wanted to run the tests. So here are the PKCS 11 tests. So this is how you can try out some basic things with your PKCS 11 library. Uh, so now we'll move on to another demo where we'll demonstrate how uh, we've tried out the Parsec along with this um, the PKCS 11 provider which we have. Hi, this is a demo of Parsec using Opti's PKCS 11 TA as the crypto provider. The Opti Kimu VM has been booted up and initialized to save time. First, we start the Parsec service. Then, we run a series of operations using the Parsec tool test utility. So once the service is started, we ping the service to make sure it is up. Next, 
we generate a key and label it with a name. Here we call it total. After that, we list all the keys generated and verify ours is there. You can see total here. Now we can use the key to do something, for example, signing a message. We can also export the public component of the key here. And finally, we delete the key and list all the keys generated again to verify the deletion. Thank you. What I'm going to demonstrate is access control with Linux kernel as enforcement and certificate support. First, let's initialize tokens with access control. In the demo, I will be using NSS for certificate operations, so let's configure that in use. Let's switch to develop user. As we can see, that it is member of the client group for OPT access and device token group for device token access. We can see here that once group-based login is configured for device token, we can access the token without any pins. Now let's use NSS to generate key pair and CSR for it. Let's use EST server for signing client certificate. Then using Certutil to import device certificate. In this demo, we are not concerned about NSS certificate trust store, so let's ignore that. As NSS didn't set the labels for uh, keeper, we need to get the object ID in pkcs 11 URI format. Next, let's make connection using OpenSSS as client to the test server. Now it has made TLSS 1.3 connection to the server, ask it hit the web page, and web page include copy of received TLS client certificate. Yeah, hello. Um, for this demonstration, I will highlight the RPMB accesses that I use when the PKCS 11 is used with uh, an RPMB as Opti secure storage. So for that, I will operate on the STM32 MP15 EV1 platform, which has an EMMC device with an RPMB partition. Well, from the Opti documentation, these are the directives to fetch and build the uh, the platform for this port. We will use slightly different um, compilation direct, uh, switches uh, so that we enable the RPMB accesses in the EMMC device by the T supplicant. So here we enable the RPMB, we disable the other Opti uh, secure storage. We have to provide the EMMC instance where the RPMB is we must remind to disable the RPMB emulation in the TS supplicant, which is enabled by default in the Opti distribution. Before that, I must mention that I've added some Linux traces and some Opti OS and PKSS 11 TA traces uh, on the console. Okay, so let's connect to the platform and let the platform boot. So TFA boots up, boots up T and U boots and U boot boots Linux kernel. So first of all, we must give T supplicant root rights because in Opti distribution, T supplicant runs with restricted user rights and we need to have some root rights to access the EMMC device and the RPMB partition. So the idea is simply to kill the T supplicant and to run it back as root. I have already provisioned a uh, key pair in my PKCS 11 TA. So now let's see what happens when we try to sign with that key. So we have PKCS 7 tool to uh, sign the data. 
who we see that first C core um, loads the TA, it access the RPMB from some specific core uh, TA database versioning um, support. And then the TA initializes, and we see that the TA accesses the RPMB device to find his database. And then the TA, the PKS7 TA has to sign, so it looks for the objects, for the uh, private key to perform the signature. It finally finds it, and then it uses it. And last, let's see what happens when we read and write to the RPMB uh, partition. So let's enable our added uh, traces in Linux and update the uh, user pin so that we'll have some read and write requests to the EMMC and RPMB partition. So we can see that the MMC read accesses are performed using two MMC transfers, one for the read request and one to get the response from the read request. And the last operation, which is a, an RPMB write operation, it's performed over three tran MMC transfers, uh, which is first the write request transfer, then a read request transfer, and then to fetch the response from the read request transfer. Well, this is it. Thanks for attending these demos. Bye.